in the first half. Kelly Whitney, 45 points in his last two contests, making 46 in his last three. Yeah, he hit for 23 against St. John's on Wednesday night. Prior to that, had a great game in a win over Iona, 22 against the Gales. He also hit for 25 earlier this season, did Whitney against uh, Manhattan. Got missed. Rebound comes down. Moving it quickly down court is Jamar Nutter as he tries to dish off. Ball drawing the crowd, as usual, and coming out with it is the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Offensively, it's a ball control offense. Here is Adrian Hill going up against Kuzan. And the first foul of the game called against Seton Hall. Hall in the lead. Just one nothing with uh, almost two minutes gone by. Kuzan getting his first personal foul. A good sign for Gary Waters. No Quincy Duby is going to put up a big number. That's what he does. But the Scarlet Knights are in desperate need of that strong number two and three scores. So far, you, know, you hope that Farmer's going to get into double figures. And then and maybe Webb's a good option. But there's nothing that Gary Waters knows in terms of scoring certainty. Yeah, what you said to him about Farmer is certainly uh, something they're looking to. He's averaging 9.3 points a game, the freshman. But he really is a guy that's the setup man for Doobie with his ball handling. Farmer then dishes to Doobie. And a timeout is called. Oh, to escape a turnover on a hell ball on a. Rutgers uh, will go to the sideline as Seton Hall calls the timeout. Gary Waters has ambitious defensive goals. They want to keep their opponents under 40% from the field. They trap, they attack, and I think they've got a good chance to do it because they're playing the Pirates, who are last in the Big East in field goal percentage, 40%. It's out of 16 teams. Seems like a big number, but that's how many we have this year. It's, it's going to take a little while to get sorted out and who exactly is in the That's a neat matchup. Well, but the 16 teams are going to get... Could be teams with winning records that don't even make the conference tournament. Losing his footing is backcourt. Here's with a two to one lead, will inbound the ball. Yeah, what a, a great environment here. And, and the rack is such a special bill. I think that's the big difference between these two programs. This type of environment, if you don't have a home arena. And this building is packed as a jump shot put up by J.R. Inman, a freshman from Pomona, New York. And the Hall still without a field goal. Now Whitney's going to fall out their entire front line. And, but what a great defensive play by Inman with the block shot. Coming from the weak side, Copeland's nice delivery inside. And Rutgers is on pace to double the number of block shots that they had all of last year. Yeah, they've been good at rejecting the ball. Here's Copeland, who leads uh, Seton Hall in scoring 15-5 a game. Trying to penetrate. Now looking for help. Ball tipped away from Whitney. Whitney gets it back. And then they're trying to make a saving pass. He throws it out of bounds. He was looking for a call because he was knocked down. Now, one of the reasons that the Pirates went to the free throw line 48 times in that St. John's game, that's the biggest number they've had in 13 years, is because they are force-feeding the ball to Whitney, and he's making the defense move. And so far, Tim, that uh, defense, as you look at the turnover, count three for Seton Hall. There's uh, four Seton Hall and uh, no field goals. 0 for 4 are the Pirates shooting in this game. Jump passing, gets 
the ball out. It rims out on Anthony Farmer, but the Rutgers Scarlet Knights get it again. Another try for Farmer. He finds the range from the same spot. And Rutgers has a 5-1 to one lead. See Seton Hall still without a field goal. Seton Hall. Overtime 69 61 and now offensive rebound by Whitney back up and finally Nutter gets one to go and Seton Hall with his first field goal is back to within two. A lot of intensity on the defensive end both teams that's why I think rebounding is going to be so huge very few contested shots that means we're going to see a lot of rebounding that needs to get done. Well, another rebound there a lot of balls coming off a lot of contact inside. We talked about a year ago in February of 05 when uh, Rutgers beat Seton Hall on a free, free throw by Doobie at the conclusion of overtime play. Seton Hall thought it was a phantom call, but they called it on Copeland. Back at Rutgers, this is back at Rutgers. This is Don Prickey with Tim McCormick, Big East opener for the Scarlet Knights. Seton Hall 1-0 in the conference. Seton Hall. Having a lot of trouble, though, Tim, getting anything down from a field goal standpoint. No, they, they were really poor against St. John's on Wednesday. They shot 26% in the first half, only 15 points. They're struggling, but one thing they've done, look at the foul trouble for the big guys for Rutgers. That's four early fouls, and I'm not sure how much they're going to play in the first half. Put a big advantage to the Pirates in the post department. Lewis Hoare, coach of the Pirates, says for us it starts with defense. The haul on defense now as the Scarlet Knights inbound the ball to the freshman point guard, Anthony Farmer. Here is Doobie, the leading scorer in the Big East with long, long range. He kicks it out. Farmer, who hit a three earlier, can't get this one to go. Up court, the ball goes to another. They're looking at Whitney again down low. Using her whole lineup, Tim, trying to defend Whitney. Adrian Hill with two. Wow. Looked like a walk to me. Jimmy English in the game. He doesn't get a lot of playing time, but he has to now. But he, those are the fouls on the other two big men. English gets his first personal foul. Seton Hall inbounding the ball. A quick shot off the jump. And Nutter can't get it to go. An official stops play with a whistle call and a foul signaled against Seton Hall. See, it, it's going to take a macho approach to deal with Kelly Whitney. He's the only player on the court with 20 and 10 potential. He has a chance to score in the low post. He's the guy that New York features inside, but he can't get that second foul. Here is Doobie, can't get the shot to go, but Webb comes up with the ball, Marquise Webb, good ball movement by the Scarlet Knights, bringing up the three-point shooter, doesn't go, here's Doobie off the baseline, and the Big East leading scorer, Quincy Doobie, a senior, actually a junior from Brooklyn, New York, gets the shot up and down, and Rutgers has a four-point lead. Now, playing last year with Shields, I felt like he and Doobie didn't coexist real well, but now that Farmer's running the point, Doobie seems a lot more comfortable, doesn't he? He does. He doesn't have to worry about having the ball in his hands a lot. Another missed shot by Seton Hall. Another foul call, although this one goes against the Pirates. Stopping the clock with 14.02 to play. One of the most impressive parts of Doobie's game is the mid-range attack. A lot of guys can make the 15-foot jumper and they can get to the rim. Not many have all three elements of their game. Deep, close, and mid-range. And Marcus Kuzan, Tim, just got his second personal foul for Seton Hall. Here is Farmer in the backcourt. He has been good right from the start. Uh, he gets a kick out now. Doobie reverses rolls as he takes the lead position. Penetrates, kicks out, and Farmer has five points. Long ball is off as uh, Seton Hall continues to misfire. That shot by Paul Dawes. English. 
And they're ruling that uh, Grant Billmeyer got a clean block on the ball. Knocked out of bounds off Billmeyer's hands, and it'll be inbounds to Rutgers. Uh, early observation here, Don. When Quincy Doobie gets the ball, the, the blue defense is so loaded up to stop him, I think that the big key is his teammates are going to have to be able to make some open shots in this game. Yeah, there's a lot of contact, too, as Doobie uh, is coming off picks. Collisions out there. Doobie defended by Stan Gaines, who is, a, I feel, a lockdown defender. Now as Doobie goes to the basket, there will be a foul call on Seton Hall that will send Doobie to the free throw line, where he is highly accurate, 88% free throws. Notice off the dribble. It's an area of emphasis. And remember, he's going against one of the most versatile defenders. Stan Gaines plays against point guards. He covered Kedron Clark from St. Peter's, who's only 5'10". He's also covered 6'10 post guys. So this is going to be a fun matchup to watch between Gaines and Doobie. And Gaines did a great job against uh, Steve Purt of Iona and a very important win for Seton Hall. Uh, Doobie, despite the 88% free throws made this season, misses the front end. Doobie first in scoring, second in steals. And he hits almost three three-pointers a game. You know, don't you think a lot of people in the Big East that see that steals number might be a bit surprised because he's such a prolific scorer. You might not appreciate the fact that he's a pretty good player on the defensive end, too. And he's a pretty good player getting rebounds. He averages over five and four and a half a game. Yep, number two on the team. Here is Copeland bringing the ball up court. When they talk about Seton Hall's success this season, they'll all talk about Donald Copeland. Many felt this was a position of weakness after Sarah Soli transferred. And Copeland's come back and he's played tremendous ball for Seton Hall. And now they get the ball low to Whitney and he slams it. Don, wouldn't you have to think that Copeland will get a lot of recognition for most improved player in the Big East this year? Without question. Got out of the St. Anthony's program in Jersey City. They say you can't outwork him. And he just, uh, he took it as a personal affront when they said point guard was a problem area. Point guard is a strength of the hall now because of Donald Copeland. Not big at 5'10", a very accurate three-point shooter. Almost 44%. Here's Whitney down low. And now Whitney getting on his game with a pivot move. He brings Seton Hall back to it in three. Jimmy Inglis fading away. Bill Meyer gets a hand up, no foul, rebound, and here comes the Hall running. Rutgers gets back nicely on defense. We're seeing that slow, low-scoring pace that we anticipated. Yeah, they're keeping it low, 10 to 7, with 11.45 to play in the first half. Rebound comes down to Rutgers, quickly up court. Marquise Webb with a spin move. Doesn't go. Battling for the rebound is Inman. J.R. Inman, a 6'9 freshman. Once he gets in the way, you may think he's really going to be something. Here he is playing a lot as a freshman. A-plus effort by J.R. Inman. A great block out on the defensive end. He goes 94 feet and gets the layup at the other end. He has started all 14 games for Rutgers as Inman. One car was ranked most appealing. And Welcome back to the rack. Rutgers by five. Why? Because they're getting it done on the glass. I want you to watch inside. J.R. Immons, a freshman, going up against Kelly Whitney. He blocks him right out of bounds, number 15. And what does he do? He sprints down and gets the offensive rebound, converts. And where's Kelly Whitney? He never made it inside the three-point line. That's a great freshman play. And Don, it's early in his career, but J.R. Inman has a chance to be a star. A Kelly Whitney type player. Well, that's a good player if he becomes that. Well, he's had big games already, even though he's a freshman against uh, Delaware State. Inman had 21 points and he blocked four shots. This season, four. He's hit 73%. Averages about seven and a half points a game and five rebounds a game. Uh, with all these young players, is it possible that Gary Waters is taking the basketball program 
in the same direction as the football program has gone. Well, the football program having its best uh, season in many years. The Scarlet Knights will be talking with the head coach, Greg Schiano, at halftime. Here is a pass to Copeland. He's defended well by... Defender in the Big East. That's what his coach Gary Waters. It's the break. It's high that, praise, isn't it? It is indeed. And that was the first uh, turnover of the game by Rutgers. Seaton Hall. I'll call against Rutgers. Rutgers uh, now with 17 fouls. Fouls on Ollie Bailey. His first. So Whitney goes to the line. Kelly Whitney, a 67% free throw shooter. That has to be disturbing as a coach to see your team not ready to play when the game starts. When you get into, into conference play, everybody knows each other so well. There's a lot at stake. It's hard to go on the road and win, but you can't do it if you don't bring the, the effort. That's two straight games that they're on pace for, for low scoring halves. Lewis Orr told us before the game, we asked him about what did he say to get that comeback ignited. He said everybody looks for some magical thing. You say there isn't. He said, all I told him, we've got to get defensive stops, get the ball and convert. Get another stop and convert, and that's what they did. As they whittled away a 20-point St. John's lead, scoring just before the buzzer in regulation to send it to overtime, where uh, Seton Hall won 69-61. Yeah. I really thought it was interesting that when Paul Gauze, as you see, going for a little a little coaching from the bench. When he made the basket in his own hoop, in the wrong hoop, that put them down by 20 points. Right. That almost seemed to be the catalyst that, that jump-started his team. We're coming to you from the rack, the Rutgers Athletic Center. Seton Hall and Rutgers in Big East basketball. Don Cricky with Tim McCormick. Rutgers with a 15-9 lead now. Seton Hall getting off to a... Big men on the bench with two each. Here is a nice dish down low and driving hard to the basket and getting it up and down are the uh, Seton Hall Pirates as Gauze gets the field goal. Now, Grant Billmeyer is playing a very quiet, effective game at both ends. Yeah, Billmeyer, he is a workmanlike guy and certainly recognized by his teammates. He is the captain of Seton Hall. Here is Gauze. This guy's another freshman, and they're not bashful. He's freshmen. They're ready to play in the Big East. Yep. Yep. Great future both ways. Uh, Rutgers lead now cut to one as Doobie works the paint. And a travel call is signaled. Rutgers looking for a hell ball call. They have possession, but it is not. It's a travel call, and the ball turns over to the hall. You know, I'm a bit surprised that, that we've seen quite a few open shots in transition. I'm getting the sense that both coaches have come in and said it's going to be hard to score in half court versus superior defense. We may need to get some opportunistic points off the break. Here is Copeland working hard to get a shot. Very After half, Seton Hall tries to with the dribble. Ryan Lang, a 
sophomore. And he'll go to the free throw line. Of Rutgers, Jerron Griffin, another freshman. Yeah, some impressive work off the dribble by Lang. Louis Orr. for the first time in the game. Eight fifty six left to play in the first half. Donald Copeland at high praise from his coach Louis Orr says Copeland has established himself as the leader of this team. And I talked to Copeland also Tim before the game and he said that he thinks the leadership role means you keep everybody strong no matter what the score. It's one thing about the Seton Hall even when they struggled last year. Rebound down to Inglis. Here comes Rutgers, leading by a point. They're trying to free up Doobie. Gauze is following him all over the court. As Gauze can play some defense also. He might have got a piece of the ball. Put back up, doesn't go down. Inglis fighting, and he hits the deck hard. Seton Hall going fast the other way. Inglis is down. Shot doesn't go for Copeland. Inglis is still down. We finally get a timeout call as Big Jimmy Inglis, a 250-pound front man, came right down on the small of his back, full force. Yeah, interesting play because Griffin knocked the ball out of bounds. It was going to be seen Halls, but because the referees already stopped the play, it's getting very... physical and they're picking up speed. English is up and it seems to be all right fortunately. And welcome back to Rutgers and Big East basketball. Right now we'll take a look at our Hyundai Cool Facts. A pretty impressive three teams in the top five in America. Louis Orr said that the Big East is the best league in America, the most competitive and the toughest, it's hard to argue, and that's a pretty good trade, isn't it? BC, yeah. you get rid of them, and you get Cincinnati, DePaul, South Florida, Louisville, and Marquette. Well, you know, Stan Gaines of Seton Hall, Tim, who's a transfer from Minnesota, Big Ten, had the best observation, I think he said, that every game in the Big East is a one-game season. The Big East has the best players, the best coaches. It's going to be interesting to see how many Big East teams make it to the NCAA tournament. A lot. It's a, it's, a, it's a great league. It's a defensive league. It's a toughness league. And Quincy Doobie looks fresh right now. I, I almost guarantee that by the end of February, he's going to have a different look on his face like he has just been beaten up. And it, 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 it's, it's really difficult when you're at the top of every team scout report. We've seen it so far. He is drawing a man and a half defender every time he's out there. His guy and somebody else ready to step in. He has uh, seven so far today, does Quincy Doobie. Talked to him one time about his shooting record. His arm would fall off, but he's got a tremendous stroke. And they're picking him up out high. They have to because his range is way outside the pro three-point line. He can shoot from 25 with no problem. Good news for the Pirates. Whitney was out. They were able to cut the deficit. He's back now. Whitney with a spin move inside, and he draws another foul. 
And this one's going to be on English to the dismay of Coach Gary Waters. English gets his second. Big expectations for number one in the blue. Two years ago, playing in the NCAA, went head to head with the New York Knicks Channing Fry, who then played at Arizona. He gave Channing Fry 24 points and 14 rebounds, and everybody knew at that. Final year for the Hall. Remember in that Arizona game, they were down 14 with 14 to go, came back and won. Doobie with a beautiful push shot off the dribble. And again, Rutgers goes up by three. Who's on in the game? Wow. A steal by Doobie. <laughs> Number two in the Big East in steals. And now a held ball inside, possession arrow to Rutgers. Held ball, Irish. They don't want to give that ball up. <laughs> a scorer doesn't want to share the ball. Oh. You're what? talking about Doobie's, his ability to definitely make a burst to the basket is also a, a, because he's not just. And, and so far, I can't say that Quincy Doobie has had an explosive offensive game, but he stayed within the offense. He has nine points. He's totally on pace for that 22-point-per-game average. Yeah, methodically building his numbers. Satan Hall looking to cut it now. Down to one as they get a nice dish. Whitney feeds Kuzan on a tip. Went to double team. He's not going to want to go next time if somebody isn't going to sink and fill and help out on his man. Newby now starting to heat up. Rutgers again by. Inside cannot do it. Ruby says there's a time in every game when I know I'm looked to to take over the game. He can go on streaks, and here is. And right. Timeout. The thing that Louis Orr wants to talk about, the defensive meltdown that left the paint wide open. Now, once you get Rutgers to make a defensive mistake by throwing it into Whitney, why do you come down the next trip and take an ill-advised three? I would be shocked if Kelly Whitney isn't going to get an opportunity to get a low post touch and check out that Rutgers defense. Team shooting just 30% from the field. Rutgers only one of eight from three-point range. Seton Hall one of four on three-point tries. Here is Copeland, who's been quiet from a scoring standpoint, but he can get it going. Pass off the hands of Rutgers. It's back in bounds to the Pirates. Oh, 
six to play in the first half. Al Copeland 0 for 6 shooting the ball so far. Light ball knocked out of bounds. Like the defense of Farmer. Really doesn't look like a freshman. The poise on the offensive end. They only have one turnover so far. His defense on Copeland has forced six missed shots. He's going to be a star for a long time. Now John Cale advising both coaches to kick ball situation. It's a new rule this year. Yeah, with the timing on the clock. Right, shot clock. At 16 seconds and below, once... If it's above, then it, it goes down. Ball is inbounded. Here is Copeland, defended tightly by the freshman Farmer. Shot clock. They double up on him. Whitney, they got to get something off. They don't. Tremendous defense by the Scarlet Knights. Forces a turnover. And with a five-point lead, Rutgers takes over the ball. Yeah. I don't think that Copeland knew. And as a senior, that's his job. Here now is uh, Anthony Farmer working in the back line. Averaging over 34 minutes a game playing time as a freshman. Against Illinois, he went up against All-American D. Brown. And played very well against him. Uh, Rutgers did not win the game, but Brown complimented him after the game. It is now a 25-18 game. Deceptive move from the ball. He kind of slides by defenders. Now the free throw on is Whitney, who was fouled by Big Jimmy English, who picked up his third personal foul. So he comes out of the game and back in is the freshman J.R. Inman. I know that he is not a great free throw shooter, but how much better do Kelly Whitney's free throws look as his career has progressed? How well, soon is that, huh? Yeah. And he does, a much better stroke. Yep. Copeland fires. He's still. This is up by four. Whitney now has 12 points. Yeah, and Whitney gets the dunk. He gets the accolades. But it was Jamar Nutter with the great work on the offensive glass. Doobie. Pulling up off the dribble to try a three, can't get it to go. 3.55 to play in the first half. Oakland having trouble penetrating this doubling up Rutgers defense. Whitney down low, can't get the shot. Racehorse basketball, long lead goes down court. And a dive at the ball. Knocks it free, it'll come back inbounds uh, to Rutgers. Gazzo, looking like Superman, he's flying at the ball. 25-21, Rutgers in the lead with 3.45 to play in the half. Also has been the key to this game. And I love a player that's not afraid to get on the hardwood. Very few open shots. No There's Whitney. He is the leading point producer for the Hall with 12 points on three of eight field goal shooting. Doobie now with 13 points. Leading score in the Big East. Here's Doobie. Great move with the ball. Picks it out to Webb. Gauze, the freshman, rebounds. Long lead. Rejected by in a lot of ways, I 
I sort of feel like as this game goes on, the better conditioned team will have an advantage. This is in a game this year. Are they ready for that over 40 minutes? And also, Tim, as it was duly noted before this building was full, it was warm in here. They didn't turn the heat down. Now there's 7,800 people in here. That cold outside, hot inside. Well, from the weak side, Inman, a special athlete. Kelly Whitney doesn't get his shot blocked very often. That was the fifth blocked by Rutgers today. And again, Copeland can't get it down. I get the sense that Copeland does not like playing against Rutgers. He's had no uncontested shots. Farmer has been tremendous. Well, just as Doobie is a target of the Seton Hall defense, uh, Copeland is one of the Rutgers defense, being the Hall's leading scorer at 15 and a half points a game. But no field goals today. Webb shoots. He's off mark. Whitney didn't have to leave his feet to rebound. Well, they double up nicely on the ball, don't they, Rutgers? They, they do. And then Whitney had too much on him. He tried to get the ball inside to a cutting gauze. Paul Gauze from Pitts Grove, New Jersey. I really like Louis Orr's offense. He's Clearly an NBA guy, loves set plays. Little Princeton. Big storyline so far in this game has been the fact that Seton Hall, they like to close up the lane. Gary Waters is going to have to come up with a reason how they're going to keep shooting threes because they're one out of ten for the perimeter. Why? Because Seton Hall has been so good extending their defense. One of ten, that won't get it done. Nissan halftime report coming up next. We'll take a look at the Big East Wire and some phenomenal individual performances. We'll talk with Rutgers football coach Greg Schiano. And we do the first half highlights and stats. John Bricky with Tim McCormick, 156 to go in the first half at Rutgers. Scarlet Knights in their Big East opener, leading Seton Hall 25 to 21. The uh, Rutgers football team, a real impressive showing in the Insight Bowl. They lost 40 years old. Pretty amazing what he's done to elevate this program. Well, it was Rutgers, as you know, came first bowl bid in 27 years. And they had their best record, 7-5, in 13 years. Bob Mulcahy, the athletic director, originally signing uh, Shiano to a contract extension as Doobie goes long range. Rebound down to Ali Bailey. It's a war underneath. Open shot for Inman. He can't get it to go, and Owison stops playing. Now, I've got a pretty good idea of what's happening defensively for St. Paul. They are saying that Doobie is going to take a lot of contested shots or he's going to pass it to his teammates and we quite frankly don't think that they can make it. So far the strategy is working out for Louis R. and the Pirates. And here is Big Alley. At 6'7", 2'30", he's a sophomore from Chicago. Must be a little bit frustrated this year. 6'7", power forward last year. Had a chance to start, play big minutes because Adrian Hill was hurt. All freshman team in the Big East. Now he's he's kind of scrapping and trying to get some more minutes. Millmeyer with a nice lead down low on the freshman guard. Sprints to the basket and lays it in. Seton Hall shooting now 29% for the game. Rutgers 28%. Seton Hall's gotten the uh, Rutgers lead down to one on three occasions. It's been as many as seven. But they've not been able to take the lead. Rutgers with an early free throw lead, and that was it. Hall's led the rest of the way. The Rutgers have led the rest of the way. Standout defender, you can't out-quick him. Copeland dishes. 
Nutter pulls up, knocks it down. It's a two-point game with 25 seconds to play in the half. Four points for Nutter. Uh, he's lucky he made that because they could have run the shot clock all the way down. And at the other end, Paul Dog seems to be injured. Yeah, this is a Paul Dog's turned an ankle, I think. Uh, made the big basket to send the game into overtime in that thrilling comeback against St. John's. He didn't want to leave the game. He's going to walk it off. Maybe go to the locker room. He is, and he's getting a little assist, so that's a difficult development for the Hall. As freshman Paul Goss, who has been absolutely terrific defending today. Locker room a little bit early, just uh, 18 seconds left to go in the half. When, when's the last time you saw a college player score in his own hoop? I saw Earl Monroe do it at the Garden for the Knicks one night. I've never seen a college player do it. Soccer, they call it an own goal. <laughs> but in the case of Seton Hall, it was the best thing that happened to him. They took over the game after that own goal by Paul Goss. If Earl Monroe could do it, that's okay for Goss. And that is the half. Rutgers with a two-point lead. 27 to 25 as leading the scoring is Quincy Dooley for the Scarlet Knights with 13 points. Whitney with 12 for Seton Hall. So all game long they've been uh, pounding it inside. There's been a lot of fouls, a lot of people on the Spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer Fund. Let's take a closer look at Coach Gary Waters of Rutgers. Yeah, Don Gary has a tremendous resume. A defensive coach got his start at Kent State, where he dominated the MAC and then led Rutgers to the NIT Finals, where they lost at Michigan. But how great was that environment? It was almost like a home game at. Big East Coaches Spotlight has been brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. Oppenheimer Funds, proud to be the official mutual funds of the Big East Conference. Best in decades. A third place finish behind two highly ranked teams in the Big East. Greg, it was a disappointing loss out in Arizona, but you guys played some great football. I think the program was built even stronger off it. Well, I think it was a great experience for our team and, uh, you know, a stepping stone, hopefully, to, to bigger things. Now, Greg, uh, you've got some juniors here. I know you can't talk about recruits, but you can have them in according to NCAA regulations. I think your best recruiting job, though, is with your fullback. You've got a first-team All-American fullback in Brian Leonard. He's coming back. Well, you're right. That is a huge recruit to, to, to keep, to retain. Uh, Brian's going to have a great year, and we were very excited when he made his decision. And He's an elite-level player in the country, so it's, uh, it's important, but these young guys are, are important, too. That's the lifeline of the program. Greg, uh, you've been in the NFL coaching with the Bears, of course, coached the Hurricanes in Miami, was their de defensive coordinator down there. Uh, everybody talks about Florida talent and Texas. New Jersey, New York, Connecticut. Oh, ours is as good as anyone's. You know, the, the only difference is the sheer number of guys. But when you look at quality, there's no doubt that uh, the New Jersey, New York metropolitan area has as good a football as anywhere in the country. A winning record, a bowl game, a real good finish in the Big East. What do you project for next year? Well, I think when you use the word program, that's, that's the key word. I think we've built a program here. We have quality players and, and quality people in every class up the ladder now, and uh, we've built an infrastructure of a big-time Division I program, so I think the future is very bright. What about next season in the Big East? How does that look? It's going to be competitive. I mean, you look at you look at what teams have done this year. We're the only league in the country that can boast that every one of their teams has been to a bowl game in the, one of the last two years. And one last question, Greg. What about Vince Young? If he does come out from Texas, you coach in the NFL, how good would he be right away, do you think? Well, I think sky's the limit. I mean, you watched that game the other night. I don't think
Uh, much success next season. I'm sure you'll have it. Thanks, Don. Appreciate it. Greg Schiano, head football coach of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights at halftime of the basketball game. The Knights lead the Pirates of Seton Hall 27-25. At the half, the Scarlet Knights lead the Pirates of Seton Hall 27-25. Don Cricky with... Score started to light it up. Yeah, it was a good adjustment by Doobie because the defense was taking away the three-point line, and so he used his mid-range game. On the other side, Kelly Whitney, they went to him early, they went to him often. 12 points, five rebounds, he was very aggressive. But the thing I loved the most was the hustle. This was not a flow game, it was effort, it was intensity, loose balls. Not great shooting, but I think it's been very competitive. And here's the adjustment by Doobie. The three-point shots not available. He wisely took the ball aggressively to the mid-range area. I thought that he was outstanding in the first half. We look now at the first half numbers. You really have to think, Tim, as this game wears on, that the foul line might decide it because they're really hammering on each other. A lot of fouls being called. Well, there, there's two things that I thought were interesting. Rutgers is up two. They have to feel good because... On the other side, Seton Hall has to feel okay because Copeland is 0 for 9. He's their best scorer, and they're only down 2. So we're just about ready to start the second half. 27 to 25 is the count. Last year.